In this video, we'll actually get to look at the process of meiosis, see what happens during it, and just look at the importance of meiosis. According to your exam guidelines, you need to know all of these bullet points. It seems a lot, but once we get into the process, you'll see it's not that bad. Now, meiosis is a type of cell division that results in four daughter cells, each with half the number of chromosomes of the parent cell. If you recall from grade 10, you'll remember that mitosis gives rise to two daughter cells. So meiosis is basically like mitosis. It just occurs twice with a few little differences of sharing of genetic material and so forth. Now, the main purpose of meiosis is to produce gametes. Now, gametes are the sex cells, which is, a, is, is an egg cell in females and a sperm cell in males. So we want to produce gametes that are haploid, so that have half, this tablet once again, that have half the amount of chromosomes um, so that they, when they fuse, they will produce a diploid amount. Remember, humans, 46 chromosomes, so in the sperm cell and egg cell, they need to be 23 chromosomes in the male sperm cell and 23 chromosomes in the female egg cell. And when those two fuse, they'll produce a diploid amount of chromosomes, which is 46. You also need to know the site of meiosis in plants and animals. And because it is the formation of sex cells, it takes place in the reproductive organs of plants and animals. So in the ovaries and testes of animals, and then in the ovaries and anthers of plants. Then you need to know that meiosis is a continuous process, but the events are divided into different phases for convenience. Now meiosis occurs in two phases, and they are known as meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Now meiosis 1 is also known as something called reduction division. Oi, if I can write reduction <laughs> division. Okay, this is not working. Reduction division. That is the other name for meiosis 1 and then meiosis 2. Now, before a cell goes through the process of meiosis, it has to go through the process of DNA replication. And this happens during interphase of this whole elaborate thing that occurs. So in the events of interphase, DNA replication takes place so the chromosomes, which are single threads, so a single thread chromosome would look like that, um, and then it would become double during a replication attached by a centromere. So each chromosome will now consist of two chromatids joined by a centromere. And G DNA replication helps to double the genetic material so that it can be shared by the new cells arising from cell division. Now, DNA replication is important because it ensures the sharing of hereditary material by all daughter cells. It makes sure that all the daughter, daughter cells have some genetic material that can be passed on. I just want to see, I think I've got a chromosome. Yeah, yeah so DNA replication, this diagram here, we've done that in the previous video. And then this is a chromosome. But then this is a chromosome after replication with uh, sister chromatids. So we call each of these legs a chromatid. So this is a chromatid. Let me do it on this purple one so you can see. So this is a chromatid. And then that would be the other chromatid. Together, those make a chromosome. Now we are going to go into the two phases of meiosis. So meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Now on the right hand side here, I've given you a quick breakdown. So remember, interphase happens before meiosis occurs because DNA replication needs to take place. So this is meiosis 1 and this is meiosis 2. Please remember that when you write in an exam, if they, if they ever ask you what phase of meiosis this is, if it is um, very specific, you need to answer my uh, prophase 1 or prophase 2. If you're just going to write down prophase, 
the, the question is most likely going to be marked incorrectly. You need to be very specific during which phase um, whatever they're asking takes place. I remember the phases in order uh, using uh, IPMAT. So interphase, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. That's how I remember the um, the order. Is it an acronym? I, I think you call it an acronym. I can't remember now. So this is what I used to remember. IPMAT. Now let's get into the first phase of meiosis. So meiosis one starts with prophase one. Now, very important, homologous chromosomes pair up. Now, what are homologous chromosomes? So, if we look at this over here, homologous chromosomes are chromosomes of the same size, shape, and then similar genes for each characteristic are found on these chromosomes. So, one chromosome uh, will be from your dad, and the other chromosome will be from your mom, for example. And let's say on this chromosome, there's, for example, a gene for hair color. And then on the mother's chromosome, at the exact same position, you will also find the gene for hair color. So these chromosomes find each other according to their size and shape. And that's also where the karyotypes come in. If you remember, karyotypes were uh, arranged from big up until small, and they were the same size. So those were homologous chromosomes. So in... Prophase 1, homologous chromosomes pair up and they form a bivalent, which means that they lie close together and they actually physically come into contact with each other. Then a very important process called crossing over takes place. Um, another thing that happens is the centrioles, remember these ones, they start moving to opposite poles. So one central will go that way and the other will go this way. And then spindle fibers, as they move, start to develop between the two. And then you'll see that the nuclear membrane, this dotted line over here, also starts to disappear. But getting back to the process of crossing over. Now this is very important because this process leads to genetic variation. Because as this is a bivalent pair, and now they are actually physically in contact with each other, what's going to happen is this leg of the dad is going to be um, basically transplanted onto the leg of the mother. So if we look on this, the dad will have a portion of the leg of the mom, and the mom will have a portion of the leg of the, of the dad. Now this is genetic variation, and this is also why you and your siblings don't look anything like each other because this is a very random thing that occurs so that certain portions of the, of the genetic material is swapped. So, very important, during prophase 1 only does crossing over occur. It does not happen during prophase 2, only during prophase 1. Going on to the next phase, which is metaphase. Now, I remember metaphase uh, M for middle. So the chromosomes are in the middle of the cell at the equator to be more specific. So the homologous chromosome pairs arrange at the equator and the spindle fibers attach to the centromeres. Now remember the centromeres are these structures holding the chromosome together. So the spindle fibers attach to that. And then the centromeres of the chromosomes don't divide. So in a uh, metaphase of mitosis, they would have divided. Now they remain attached. I just forgot one important thing. Remember that we said humans, 46 chromosomes. Now showing this in uh, to, to, dis to display meiosis would be very complicated because I would have to have 46 chromosomes stuffed into that cell. So it can get a bit distracting. And that is why in this case, we are only using four chromosomes. It's just to show what happens during the process. So remember, 46 chromosomes in humans, but we're only using four chromosomes just to demonstrate the process of, met, uh, of meiosis, because otherwise this thing would have been stuffed with chromosomes. 
So that is metaphase one. Very simple. The centrioles are now at opposite poles and the spindle fiber is going out from them. Now the next phase is anaphase. So what happens here is the spindle fibers contract and shorten, pulling the homologous chromosomes apart. So it was very important that these homologous chromosomes lie on each side of the equator. And there's another thing that contributes to uh, genetic variation here, and that is random arrangement of the chromosomes during this phase. So random arrangement. These chromosomes could have arranged, this one could have been on this side, and this pink chromosome could have been at the top. It, it could have happened in any order, just as long as these homologous chromosomes um, ended up at the equator next to each other. And the reason that is very important that they align in homologous pairs is because in anaphase they're going to be pulled to opposite poles. And this is going to start causing a split in the cell. So we need a chromosome that has, for example, the gene of hair color in this one and one in that one so that both of these cells will have a gene for hair color. I hope that makes sense. So the spindle fibers contract and shorten and they pull the whole chromosome to opposite poles. So in this case now, the homologous chromosome pairs that you saw in metaphase are being split apart. So one pair of homologous chromosome moves to one pole and the other one moves to the other pole. And then cytokinesis or the invagination of the cytoplasm as shown by um, will start occurring. So this you can actually see in telophase. So it will happen late anaphase, early telophase. You'll see that this invagination starts to occur. So where the cell starts to break off. It's basically like you taking if you're playing with clay and you want to make two separate balls, you squeeze and you pull. That's basically the process of cytokinesis. Now telophase 1, which is the last part of meiosis 1, so basically what happens is those chromosomes that were pulled to opposite poles, they now group at each of their poles. Then those spindle fibers that were between the centrioles start to disappear. A nuclear membrane starts to form around these chromosomes and then cytokinesis at the end of telophase will be complete. So we'll have two round cells, each um, with the same amount of genetic material. So the daughter cells each have one chromosome from the homologous pair and therefore have half the amount. That is why it's called reduction division. Because here at metaphase, we still had two of the same type of chromosome from uh, each parent. Now we are going to half that, so we want half the amount. So we've gone from four chromosomes to two in each cell. But it is still, um, it still has all the genetic material because we pulled them apart. This one will have hair, um, a hair gene, that one will have a hair gene. And we've also contributed to genetic variation because of that crossing over and the random arrangement at the equator. So now we can move on to meiosis 2. So meiosis 2 starts with prophase 2. Remember, no interphase here. So during prophase 2, we now have those two cells that we formed at the end of telophase 1. So each chromosome consists of two chromatids and a centromere. So that's a chromosome and that's a chromosome. One, two chromosomes. And each of them, if we zoom in on a chromosome, will have one, two chromatids, and they are held together by a centromere. Now, very important, there is no pairing of homologous chromosomes because that cannot happen, because this one's homologous chromosome is now in this cell, so they cannot get to each other. But what will start happening now, same as with prophase 1, the nuclear membrane starts to disappear, and then the spindle fibers start forming at the opposite poles between the centrioles, which are also now starting to move to opposite poles. That then brings us to metaphase. Once again, metaphase for middle. So the chromosomes go lie at the equator in a single row, not a double row, because there's no longer any, uh, there's no more homologous chromosomes. So the spindle fibers will now attach to the centromeres 
of these chromosomes. That then brings us to anaphase 2. So now the centromeres holding these chromosomes together divide. So there's a piece of the centromere on either side. The chromosomes separate and move to opposite poles. The chromosomes at each pole are now known as daughter chromosomes and cytokinesis begins. Once again, how do these chromosomes get to the opposite poles? Because of the spindle fibers that are attached to the centromeres pulling them to opposite poles. Once again, um, this is a very important process because this chromosome could have been flipped to the other side so that leg could have been on that side and that leg on that side also um, contributing to genetic variation. So now cytokinesis starts to happen at the end of anaphase, so late anaphase, early telophase 2. So now these chromosomes will group at the poles at telophase 2. The spindle fibers that were formed there start to disappear and the nuclear membrane and the nucleolus, that green little section there, start to appear again um, or start to form. And now we have four daughter cells that have been formed, each with a haploid amount of chromosomes. So at the end of meiosis 1, we had two daughter cells. And now at the end of telophase 2, we have four daughter cells. And these chromosomes, there will be a chromosome, for example, with a gene of hair color. There's one, there's one, there's one. So each of these um, chromosomes, or sorry, these cells will have chromosomes that will have the same genetic trait or a similar trait, so we want the specific gene to be carried on, but there'll be variations of that gene. I hope it makes sense. This is, is a very basic explanation. It's much easier when there's a class in front of you to explain it. I hope I did it as best as I could.